I've seen some videos recently of people ranking famous physicists, famous mathematicians, physics equations, but honestly, they're forgetting about the basics. And the basics is the mathematical symbols themselves. Today, I'm gonna make a tier list of all the mathematical symbols that you know and love and hate. And some of them you probably hate because some of them suck. Some of them are really good. Let's get started. All right, first up is the classic. You got X here. Imagine if you were told, all right, you can do math, but you can never use X again, right? You'd probably be pretty brokenhearted about that. So X, you know, it's nothing like super special. It's not the best symbol ever, but it's essential. And so I'm gonna put it in A tier right here. Along with X, of course, comes Y. These are like the basic, basic symbols of math. You really can't do anything without X and Y. And if I was told I couldn't use X and Y again, I honestly don't know what I would do. I would drop out, I would join biology. So Y, pretty good, not quite X, right? You don't use Y in quite the same situations. Y is gonna be B tier. And like Y, of course, you have Z here, Z being the third Cartesian coordinate. A nice looking symbol, right? These are all nice, nice looking, but I'm still gonna put it probably in the C tier here here now here's a beauty here we got alpha and I like alpha you know it's kind of hard to write when you first start learning to write it but it could be maybe I just like alpha because I am one alpha I'm gonna put that in the uh, a tier right here beta of course is the next letter in the Greek alphabet of course I don't like beta because I'm not one beta shows up like alpha when you're writing the angle of things a lot so you know, I'm gonna put beta in the B tier and there's a pattern here, but no, don't don't even think that. I'm just gonna choose random. Um, here we got capital pi. Capital pi is like pretty cool. I didn't even know it existed for a long time. Maybe you didn't know it existed either, but it's like the product of a bunch of things. So if you have a bunch of, you know, variables or whatever, you take capital pi, take the product of them. Pretty cool stuff. You know, you can do that, that's allowed in math. I'm gonna put pi as an A tier because of its computational functionality. Next we got infinity, and now infinity's pretty big. There's lots of infinities. There's the infinite love I have for physics. Just kidding, that's definitely finite. Infinity, I'm gonna put it in as a C tier. It's kinda just like an eight rotated 90 degrees. So whoever came up with this, you know, you gotta be more creative than that. Two symbols I hate, uh, not this symbol, these symbols, mu and nu. And now mu and nu can actually go die in hell together because whenever they're used together on the same thing, you always mix them up, right? They're the same thing. Who Who is it who's coming up with all these shapes that have, you know, this, you know, up, down, up shape to them? Both of them are like that. You gotta be more creative and don't use them together. And I always hate, for some reason, whenever someone wants to use mu, they're also using nu. Yeah, they look different here. Try writing them down and you'll confuse them. Uh, so both of these are F tier for lack of creativity. Mu is just a U with a, a thing here. All right, next up, chi. Now, not to be mistaken with X, chi is a pretty cool symbol because chi always represents something like cool, like the chi squared distribution. So I associate it with like good things in my mind. I also like it how this is like really thin and then this line is thicker. It gives like kind of a dimensionality to this symbol. Uh, I'm gonna put Kai as A tier for being just like, you know, you're a cool dude. You, you represent cool things and I like you and you're welcome in the A tier. All right, Phi. Phi is classic. Phi is like, um, I think theta is like X and Phi is like Y for angles. It's like, okay, theta is not being used so you got Phi. And in that sense, I think phi is B tier, simply because theta is probably gonna be A tier. In fact, I'll put theta wherever it is, A tier, because that's like the go-to angle, right? That's your guy. And you're like, oh, theta's taken up, well, I gotta go to my you know, second in command or whatever. Phi, all right, I gotta use phi now. Ugh, got more symbols. Phi B tier. All right, epsilon. Epsilon is an interesting symbol. Epsilon always shows up in things where you're annoyed. If like, oh, now you're dealing with something small, so now we're gonna put in epsilon. Think epsilon is something small. Now we're gonna do a math proof that sucks. I'm gonna have to put it in D tier. All right, delta. Now delta is kind of similar. Delta also shows up when you're confused and equations are bad and then they're like, okay, now delta. And we're gonna do something weird that you've never seen before. 
and Delta is somehow going to be responsible for it. An E tier. It's kind of a cool symbol, but it just shows up at the wrong times. And I'm sorry, dude, you show up at the wrong times, you get put in the E category. That's how it works. Sigma's kind of like just bland. I don't know what it is, but there's something really bland about this symbol. I don't see anything really fascinating about this symbol. In fact, it shows up sometimes and I always think, well, couldn't you use a better symbol? I'm gonna put it in D tier for Sigma. All right, I've never seen this symbol before. I'm gonna call it the coat hanger symbol. Um, I don't particularly know if it's ever been used ever in anything in math. It somehow is in LaTeX and I grabbed it and here it is, and I don't know who you are. You're like a mystery man. And I think it would be cool if people used you sometimes. For being like mysterious, um, you know, I'm gonna have to put you in E tier, but just because you've never been used before, you know, you don't belong in a very good tier. All right, Kappa. Kappa's kind of cool. It's like a K, it's kind of bent. Like it looks like it's out of shape or something. Like something happened to a K, it got whacked with a stick and now it's all bent and Kappa's definitely a D tier. It's not great, but it's not fantastic. I feel like Lambda is kind of one of the first symbols that you ever deal with where you're kind of like beyond X and Y and you're in physics and it's like, oh, we're gonna talk about wavelength. We're gonna use this new symbol and you get all panicky because you've only used three symbols before. All of a sudden you're using Lambda. It doesn't even look like anything you've seen before. But I have to give it points for being like structurally um, integral right i mean it's living in two dimensions it's leaning it's got this extra support here so it doesn't fall over i'm gonna put lambda b tier it's nothing great to look at but it's it is what it is capital lambda capital lambda now i think this is the most underrated symbol ever you have all these symbols and all this fancy crap that you see all over the place and even in the english alphabet and they didn't think to make this a symbol it's even simpler than an A, a capital A, and it's not used. Everyone wants to do their U's and V's, mu and nu and all this crap in the F tier. No one thought to do it the other way, and it's so simple, right? Why not make the first letter of the alphabet this thing here, this capital lambda? What a beautiful, underrated symbol. And for being so underappreciated, I'm gonna put you in the A tier. You're, you're cool, and you should have been here, okay? <laughs> and you're not used as often as you are. Omega is a really cool looking symbol, especially in LaTeX. It's got that like horseshoe vibe. It's got kind of a like, you know, mysterious support arch vibe. I'm gonna put it B tier, but probably B tier just because it's not used very often. I wouldn't even use it really. Here we got another one of these mu nu nu symbols. It's, it's even different than those two. I don't even know what this is called here. Probably another one of this crap. So it belongs here with these. Look, they're all basically the same. Could you imagine using all three of these symbols at the same time? It's not that any one of them is bad, but it's just they get mistaken all the time. Don't do this. Don't have three things that look like this. Math, why are you this way? The symbol pi. I like the symbol pi. It's kind of an important number. I don't know if you've heard of it before. And it's so important for everything that I think it's gonna have to go in S tier. I mean, the history behind this number and calculating it and it shows up all the time, that's really an S tier number. I don't know what this is. I've never seen this before. I'm glad it's not used. It's just overall awful. I think this again belongs in F tier. I think it's IOTA or something, but it's just, no. It's got the same sort of shape, this U shape. Just stop with these. C, C is like representing the speed of light in physics. C is so important the history behind this symbol and everything too. But honestly, uh, C tier. This symbol here, I've seen it used in papers. People love to use it because it's like, look at me, I'm a fancy guy. I use fancy symbols that have curls like this and you know, have no purpose. I could have used something else that's way simpler, but I use this fancy curly symbol that also takes up a lot of space. It's so pretentious and it's overused and it's like wearing a, purple hat with a feather in it. It's just, no, it's too fancy. Doesn't, not for me, the E tier. All right, this is another one of these things I've never seen used. And I'm really happy it's not used because what a pain to write. To take your hand up three times and write three things in for one thing is, is too much. This is an E tier item. All right, here we got capital theta. And capital theta is again, one of these things I've only seen come up recently. 
and it's different than theta and I kind of hate it because I was used to have trouble differentiating it between theta but what I do is I lift my hand above the paper to draw this thing in the middle but it's kind of a pain of a thing I think it's a D tier because it's not really used that often and if you do use it it's it's sort of annoying Sigma is a pretty cool symbol just because it's unique, it's sharp, it gets to the point. It almost looks like it would hurt to touch it because it's kind of got claws to it. I think Sigma is an A tier. Now, I actually love little L. This is slash L in LaTeX and it's different than L and it's, it's just beautiful. L shows up all the time in quantum mechanics for angular momentum or whatever the heck it needs to be. And it's nice having this as opposed to just a regular L. This is a good symbol. I'm going to put it B tier. All right, next we got Nabla. Nabla is an operator. It's uh, the gradient. It can be used to represent many things. Um, if you put a little vector over it, it's also a different symbol in math. It's just an upside down triangle. Very basic, but not much to it. And I kind of like that. And I think I'm going to have to put it A tier. Next we got the symbol uh, Omega. Again, it's it uh, looks like the W. It's kind of easy to write. It shows up quite a bit. It's nothing really special though. It's not the, the nicest symbol, but it, it does the job well. And I think Omega belongs in the C tier. Gamma. Gamma is an interesting symbol. And I don't like the way it shows up in LaTeX here. Not the nicest. I like the little loop in it. Not a huge fan of this particular gamma. I think this is about a B tier symbol. All right, now we got Ada, and Ada is kind of like Mu, but I, it's not this F tier stuff where it gets confused a lot. I think when people use Ada, it's generally known what it means. It's kind of one of those symbols that you think, why not use another symbol? Why not use the little N or whatever? I don't know. I think this is a C tier because it still has its purpose. Now we got F, F for functions. F is a classic, and I really think that there's no doubt that this is anything but the A tier, just because of its simplicity. You have a function, you have the concept of a function. Now, everything is an F, F is good. If you don't have F or if you're already using F, then you go to G. So G is kind of like the, the next in line to F. And it's definitely not as good. It's like, oh, guess F's used. Well, now I gotta use G. G is kind of lower down. Because you kind of look down to G, I think G is a C tier. And of course, sometimes when you don't even have G, right? F and G are used, oh, now I gotta use H. And so H is kind of like below G in that regard, the hierarchy of symbols. I gotta put H in the D tier. Next we have this symbol, and now don't mistake this with an X. This is the cross product. It's not even times. Don't even think of it as multiplying two numbers. This is the cross product symbol. Pretty neat. Um, the cross product, of course, being non-commutative, I'm gonna have to put this in a C tier. Rho is another good one, um, you know, it's kind of dumb if you have Rho and P, they can get confused. Uh, for that, I would probably put Rho C tier. Next, you got this thing here. I don't know what this is. This is just like two snakes fighting or something. I think this is supposed to represent imaginary number in for whatever reason. This doesn't read to me as anything. Uh, this is probably an E tier. Oh, we got the dot product. Ooh, the dot product is beautiful. Just a nice dot. Um, I'm gonna have to put the dot product as B tier. It's, it's easy to compute, it's nice, it's just a dot. Next we got this box. Um, I'm gonna have to put this box in this box, don't be mistaken by the two boxes. This is the um, some symbol that represents spatial and temporal derivatives. So someone was like, I wanna do this long thing that requires a lot of space, I'm just gonna replace it with a box. And you know what, I like that ingenuity. This box here has its place in the B tier. Now, H bar is one of the classic important symbols in physics. What a beautiful symbol. I mean, it's nothing like H, which belongs in the D tier. Someone said, you know what? I wanna represent this number. There's no other symbol I'm gonna use. I'm gonna put an H, I'm gonna put a bar on it. Belongs in the S tier, clearly for its ingenuity. Next, we got this squiggle. Again, I don't know what this is. This is just something. Uh, again, one of these, this is like this D tier quality. I mean, whoever came up with this probably came up with this after when they're like, you know what? I need a new symbol and I'm gonna just scribble and then they come up with this and they scribble. I mean, I'm telling you, whoever's making these, please stop. Like, it's just, it's too much. It hurts my head. 
Next we got Psy, and Psy is also holds a place in my heart. The wave function in quantum mechanics. What a beautiful symbol. You got that line striking down. You got that nice little thing going through it. It looks like it's just pierced this part of it like a ribbon and it stabs right into the ground. My opinion, a lovely symbol. And this is an S tier for its loveliness. Uh, the factorial, just an exclamation mark. Someone said, this number's really big. We're gonna have to mark it down with an exclamation. Um, so, you know, uh, it's just, it's whatever. I think it's D tier. I don't even know what to say about it. It just is an exclamation mark. Partial derivative's kinda cool. They're like, you know what? A derivative is a D. I want them to still know it's a derivative, but I don't want to mistake the two. I'm gonna curl that top of the D. And you get this symbol here, and it kind of shows up in some dark places sometimes when you're solving something and you think, ah, partial derivative, what a pain. I think this is an A tier, just for its uh, functionality especially. Again, another one of these squiggly symbols. If you use this on your paper, then you're pretentious. Just stop. Use another symbol. You don't need this. You really don't need this symbol. It's not required. This is an E tier symbol. Uh, the integral, classic symbol. This was like one of the biggest advancements in math, obviously, integrating. What a crazy thing. Um, it's not, well, mm, I'm, I'm sort of gonna put it in between the A and the S tier because it's too big for me to do anything. So it's sort of a mix there, I'll do that. Next, you got this symbol here. It's kind of like a partial derivative, but they're like, okay, now there's all this other stuff that we're gonna do with the partial derivative. I remember dealing with this sometimes and it was really kind of, um, it was just not a good time. I remember not really even liking it. So uh, ingenuity to the guy who came up with it. This is about a D tier symbol. Next, we got the symbol Aleph. It looks like a N that was like, I'm the king of all Ns. You know, it's got its foot down here with its leg and then it's got like a ax here. It's just, it's very fancy of a symbol. Um, it shows up in Aleph Knot, the classic math symbol. I think this is an A tier just because it, it is pleasing to look at. But it also is one of those painful looking symbols. Like I would hurt myself if I was nearby it. Uh, R, this is like one of these classic things like if you were to read an old like Shrek book that Shrek was reading at the beginning and it's a fairy tale and it's just like read this book for knowledge and it starts with this big R very fancy looking symbol they even put this little tail here there's a lot that went into the crafting of this symbol uh, this represents usually the real component of a number uh, it looks nice I'm gonna probably put it uh, a tier it is just a nice looking symbol uh, the L for Lagrangian, um, it's kind of nice. I don't know, it's got kind of a flow to it. Um, it's nice to write it with a loop when you're doing it on paper, but apparently it doesn't have that here. Um, I'm gonna put this B tier for being just a nice symbol. Now, the problem with V is that it's got potential, literally. <laughs> but, um, you know, I don't know why this is a lot thinner than this. Maybe there's some aesthetic thing that we like about that. I'm gonna probably put V in a C tier along with capital T as well. Uh, they're just overall decent, but nothing special to them. Uh, finally, we got Boltzmann constant little K. Now this K's got a lot going on here. I don't really know. It's got this jutting out up top. You got this kind of a hook here. Uh, you got this, like it's unraveling something, like a plant almost. Um, very interesting design choice. This is clearly going to be a B tier. Finally, the symbol implies. And now this is uh, interesting, used for proofs and math. Nothing special about it. I'm gonna put this D tier. I mean, I think I was maybe unfair to this. I kind of like this, and this is sort of the mystery one, and this I think I'm gonna make it really large and just put it outside the tier list because I think it's worth remembering that this exists, remember it. So this belongs here in the advertisement symbol here. I, I, I challenge everybody to use this symbol in a paper for now and if for some reason this video goes viral, um, I hope this symbol uh, you use. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for Python tutorials and other interesting topics that I just randomly come up with. Uh, join the Discord server as well if you want to talk with other people in math or physics or anything and you want to engage. There's been people talking about the various projects that they're working on, for example. And it's a very kind community of people. So join that as well. And I'll see you next time.